The question of infallibility was dealt with amply and sufficiently in the uh, Constitutio Dogmatica Prima Pastor Eternus de Ecclesia Christi of the 18th July, 1870 at First Vatican Council. That is for those who have the, the collection of Denzinger back home, Denzinger number, 30, 20, number 3020 until 3070. In this uh, dogmatic constitution, Pope Pius IX, with the help of bishops and theologians, formulated the exact doctrine on the papal infallibility, the very doctrine that, as I said yesterday when I explained the significance of the term anathema, the very doctrine that you have to believe or you will go to hell. You find this doctrine in the fourth chapter of the Constitution. And here it says, This gift, then, of truth and never-failing faith was conferred by heaven upon Peter and his successors in this chair, that they might perform their high office for the salvation of all, that the whole flock of Christ kept away by them from the poisonous food of error might be nourished with the pasture of heavenly doctrine, that the occasion of schism being removed, the whole church might be kept one and resting in its foundation might stand firm against the gates of hell. But since in this very age in which the salutary of eff efficacy of the apostolic office is most of all required, not a few are found to take away from its authority. We judge it altogether necessary solemnly to assert the prerogative which the only begotten Son of God vouchsafed to join with the supreme pastoral office. Therefore, faithfully adhering to the tradition receiving from the beginning of the Christian faith, for the glory of God our Savior, the exaltation of the Catholic religion, and the salvation of Christian people, with the approval of the Sacred Council, we teach and define that it is a dogma divinely revealed. That the Roman pontiff, when he speaks ex cathedra, that is, when in discharge of the office of pastor and teacher of all Christians, by virtue of his supreme apostolic authority, he defines a doctrine regarding faith or morals to be held by the universal church is by the divine assistance promised to him in blessed people, Peter, excuse me, in blessed Peter, possessed of that infallibility with which the divine redeemer willed that his church should be endowed in defining doctrine regarding faith or morals. And that therefore such definitions of the Roman pontiff are of themselves and not from the consent of the church, irreformable. But if anyone, which may God avert, presume to contradict this our definition, let him be anathema. That means in practice, the Pope says, in virtue of my apostolic authority, I here with declare, define, and state that this and this and this is to be believed by all the faithful forever. Then he speaks infallibly, and only then he speaks infallibly. <laughs>